Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I know I said we were going to talk about the audio mixer, but I did feel that there were a few more bells and whistles that I did want to add in because I know that people like to just get in, start editing right away, and then they'll sort of follow along with the tutorials. So I thought it was important to talk about a few bells and whistles. That's why I wanted to do an Audio Basics Part 2 lesson to make sure that you have all of the information when it comes to audio that you need before you start dropping clips into your timeline. Now, as always, before we get rolling, I want to give a big shout out to Video Guys, our sponsor. Don't forget, if you're looking for Media Composer subscription licenses, head on down to the show notes below for the links. You can head on over to Video Guys website, get that coupon code of MC101 to get 5% off your subscription license. And as always, I want to remind you that if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one Media Composer training, you can always send me an email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. All of the lessons are recorded for you to save for your future reference. And I always give discounts if you want to get in and do multiple lessons to get you up to speed on whatever project you happen to be working on. And last but certainly not least, I want to remind you that if you find this tutorial useful, Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media to help us get the word out there about Media Composer. To all those editors in Premiere or in Resolve who maybe need to jump into Media Composer and get a project done, or maybe you've just been away from Media Composer for a while and you just want to freshen up on, on some great tips and tricks, hopefully everybody can get something, whether it's a lot or even just that one little tidbit out of every lesson that we put up on the YouTube channel. All right, so let's talk about some audio bells and whistles. Now, I call it bells and whistles because it's things that are important to consider really when you're setting up your timeline and when you're working with audio, and then we can get in and talk more about the audio mixer and actually audio mixing inside a Media Composer, all right? So let's create a new timeline. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to Timeline. I'm going to come to New. I'm going to come to Sequence. Now, keep in mind, if you're a Media Composer editor coming from a previous version of Media Composer, this might look a little bit different to you. You'll notice that inside sequence, we have something that's called default template. Control shift and N, command shift and N for all my Mac friends out there. What I'm gonna do is just select it because you will notice that by doing that, it's gonna create us a default timeline, how we're accustomed to seeing it. One video track, two audio tracks, and of course we have our time code track. Now what I'm gonna do is just call this new timeline. And what I normally like to do with my timelines is I like to stick the timecode track in between the audio and the video, just as a divider, just makes sort of me keeping things separate from each other a lot easier. Now, what you can do is simply hold Control or Command and drag that timecode track to where you want it to go to, just like such. But I do wanna point out that sometimes it gets a little bit weird when you're dragging it around and you're just kinda of trying to get it to where you want it to go, it doesn't quite get there. So if you're ever in that situation, always remember, you don't necessarily need to just move the timecode track. You can always, in this case, just grab the video track and you'll see that that quickly got the timecode divider exactly where I wanted it to go, all right? Now, again, two tracks were created by default. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the timeline up the way that I always have it set up when I start a project. And what I'm gonna do is just add six more tracks. Now, keep in mind, this is the default layout for a mono timeline, alternating left and right tracks when it comes to creating stereo pairs. Now, I'll show you in just a second how you can set this up for a stereo workflow if you want to work that way as well. As always, just keep in mind what is paramount to that workflow is your audio setting. You're gonna to need to make sure you set the right pan for mono tracks in here to make sure that Media Composer functions the way that you expect it to as you are editing. All right, so I just made eight audio tracks. So what do these tracks represent? These tracks represent on one and two, voiceover, on three and four, on-camera dialogue, on five and six, FX, on seven and eight, music. So voiceover, on-camera dialogue, FX, music. Now keep in mind, as you're working, you may have more voiceover tracks, more on-camera dialogue, more effects, more music. What I always do, doesn't matter how many tracks of audio I have, I always keep things blocked off like that. Voiceover, on-camera dialogue, effects, music. This way, whether it's another editor stepping in 
whether it's been sent to an audio post house and they're trying to track things down, it's very simple to look at all of my timelines and figure out exactly where everything is because all of the like items are always kept together. All right. Now, this is a bit of a pain in the butt to do this every time, slightly annoying. So what I'm going to do is actually just delete this timeline. And what I'm going to do is head to my settings, believe it or not. I'm going to navigate all the way down to my sequence template. And what I'm going to do is simply double click on it. You'll notice that by default, the sequence template is set up to the default template, which gives me the Media Composer standard default timeline layout of video and two audio tracks. But let's now set this up the way that I would set it up, the way that I just showed you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new one here, and I'm just going to call it KPM Mono Default. All right, and I'm simply going to say create. So it's going to create me that preset. What I'm going to do is add the tracks into it that I want all the way up to tracks seven and eight. I am just going to save this and this is now all set to go. So if I was to head back here, I navigate to timeline, to new, to sequence, to my default mono layout. You'll see there they all are all set to go. Now, of course, maybe there'll be times where I want to work in a stereo workflow. What I'm going to do head right back in here to my sequence template. I'll just go to the default template here, which is fine. Again, much like I had done before, I'm just going to create a new one. It's going to be called, of course, KPM Stereo Default. All right. And what I'm going to do is instead of adding six audio tracks, I'm just going to add four more audio tracks. Because remember, this is voiceover, voiceover, on-camera dialogue, on-camera dialogue, effects, but this time they'll be stereo and music. And this time they'll be stereo. Let's just save that here. And now if I cancel out, let me just delete this timeline here. And I come back up here to timeline new sequence stereo. There's my stereo layout with voiceover, on camera dialogue, stereo effects, stereo music. All right. So this is, I'm just going to say an important starting step. It's a very simple thing to get in and set up, but this way you don't find yourself having to go in, create all the tracks, get everything laid out the way that you want every time. Simple, straightforward, get you going in the right direction. All right. Now I kind of tease this a little bit by actually having it activated, but let me just talk a little bit about the track control panel. So you might be thinking the track control panel, what the heck is that? Well, it's actually open now when by default it's not. So you'll notice right up here is a little arrow that's pointing towards my time code display. And you'll notice that I can actually click it. And what it's doing is, is it's actually expanding the timeline out a little bit to give me some more options in here. So what I'm actually going to do is just go back to our timeline for one second, because this is where you can find things like audio waveforms, okay? You also can enable and disable tracks from here as well. So if, for example, you had a rough mix on a track that you didn't want the client to hear, you can simply turn it off, play different mixes from different tracks, easily turn them on, easily turn them off. Now, I want to draw your attention to this as well. You'll notice it's got some little keyframes on it. When I drop it down, you'll see that I have the option in here of viewing the clip gain, the volume, and the pan. Now, I'm going to talk about this more when I talk about audio mixing. I just wanted to draw your attention to it so that you know that it's there. All right. Last but certainly not least, inside of Media Composer, much like inside of most nonlinear editing applications, we have the ability to do audio effects. So, for example, if I turned Audio Track 2 on, I navigate to Tools, I come down to the Audio Suite effects. I have the ability in Audio Suite to do things like, let's put in a, an EQ, we'll do a seven band EQ. What I can then do is just simply activate it again. Keep in mind, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of what I'm doing here, whether you understand Audio EQ or not. But what I wanted to draw your attention to is the fact that I can apply that right here onto a specific clip in the timeline. However, there may be situations where, let's say hypothetically, you have an issue with voiceover or on-camera dialogue that's across your entire timeline. And you want to get in and add one of those effects as a track effect and not a clip effect. Right down here below our waveform, our basically our way to get in and add keyframing to our uh, audio timeline or the on-off toggle, 
is these five little boxes that you'll notice that if I hover over them, they don't actually give you a tool tip. What this actually represents is our track effect. You'll see audio track effect tool. So now if I got in and I came in and said, well, let's come down to EQ, let's add that seven band EQ. You'll notice it's mono because the track is mono. This would then be applied to the entire track, not to a specific clip. Now again, keep in mind, we'll talk more about these in later lessons, but I want to draw your attention to it. That way, if for some reason you needed to get in and quickly add an effect, an audio effect across the entire track, that is how you would get in and do it. All right, now let me just circle back here for a second because I want to talk about audio waveforms specifically and something that can be quite annoying when you're setting up your timeline displays. All right, so as I just showed you, to get in and to show your audio waveforms, which is obviously an important thing, especially when you're dealing with editing audio. Very simple. When you have your track control panel open, you'll see that you have access to it right here. Quick and simple, all right? And what I would like to do is I'd like to get in and set up a timeline display that I can save, that I can go back and forth to based on what I happen to be doing in my timeline. So I'll give you an example. All right, let's say this is my standard audio layout. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add maybe two more tracks. All right, and what I want to do is when I'm doing my standard editing in my timeline, this is the view that I like to have. So what I'm going to do is navigate right down here to the bottom. Now, yours will probably say untitled. Mine just says standard, which is totally fine because I'd actually deleted the ones that I had there for the purposes of this lesson. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this view and I am going to call it standard. All right, because this is the standard layout that I have when I am editing my timeline. However, if I happen to be doing mixing with keyframes on my audio tracks, if I want to get in and see things like my audio waveforms and things like that, this is where our sequence display or our timeline display is really going to come in handy. All right, so let me show you how this works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the audio tracks and I'm going to use Command or Control and L to make the tracks larger or Command and Control K to make the tracks smaller. So you'll see I can increase their size like this and then I can send it the other way too. Now that's using K, this is using L. All right, so let's get it nice and large here. Very nice. And you'll notice now that when I turn on my waveforms, they are so much easier to see, so much easier to navigate, and so much easier to edit with, all right? So I'm very happy with this view, and this is what a lot of people do. They do this. They'll come down here and they'll say, okay, perfect. What we're going to do is we're going to call this waveform editing. I'm just going to make up a name for it, all right? Waveform editing, fantastic, all right? So what happens is, is they go from waveform editing, and they say, you know what? I just want to see the standard view here. Let's go to standard. Well, wait a second, why are the waveforms still on? I don't want them on anymore. Let me turn them off, okay? And you know what? That's great. I'm going to go back now to my waveform editing. And when I go back here, they're not actually on anymore. All right, so what is going on here? Well, think of it this way. When we're dealing with bin views, once we get in and we make an adjustment to a bin view that is something that can be saved, it immediately will call the bin view dot one. So this way I know that a parameter has been added that I can save a view of that I can go back to at any time. But you'll notice that with the waveform, I don't have that flexibility. Well, I must have, there's gotta be a way to have that flexibility. Well, there actually is. It's just not readily apparent when you're working in your timeline. Let me show you what I mean. So you'll notice here that if I click this, Nothing down here is changing. Waveform editing is not changing, but watch this. If I get in and start making size adjustments, you'll see immediately that waveform editing has now become waveform editing.1. I'm just going to switch it back now. So the question is, where do I find the audio waveform so that I can include it in this view? Let me show you. What I'm going to do is come to our fast menu and you'll notice in here we have the option for audio data. Now this displays things like waveform, clip gain, and volume. If I turn on waveform from here, you'll now see that waveform editing has become dot one. Now what I can do is say save as, I can call this waveform editing, replace it, and when I toggle back and forth between the standard view and the waveform editing view, the waveforms are now there, but you'll notice they have not been toggled on here. This menu setting overrides 
this here. You'll notice here, if I come back, we actually have a little option that says allow per track settings, all right? But you'll see that this one overwrites the other. For me, I personally prefer to have it set here as opposed to constantly be toggling things on and off. In most cases, if I want to see my waveforms, I'm dealing with larger audio tracks because to be honest, tiny waveforms are like impossible to see. So this for me is an important setup and it's important to understand how to set it up. This is actually an older school media composer trick because audio waveforms were added in this menu before they were added here. That's why it overwrites it here and doesn't here. All right, so something exceptionally important to keep in mind. You will also notice now that if I come here, I'm just going to toggle on the volume, for example. All right, again, you'll see volume is turned on. This is again if we we're going to be doing audio mixing here, but you'll notice it hasn't been updated here. But what I can do is again, I'll just turn volume off here, come back here to audio data turn volume on as well you'll see it's now called dot one what I'm going to do is save this as a new one call it wave form volume I should call it volume editing okay you'll now see boom I can switch now back and forth there's just the waveform there's the standard view there's our volume with our waveform and what I should do here quickly is I'm just going to sort of throw this in here just to show you that you do have the complete capability of adding keyframes in here. So if you wanted to come in and do your little mix from here, you do have the ability to do that. But I want to save all of that information for a future lesson. All right. Now, as always, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to our sponsor, Video Guys. Don't forget to use that coupon code MC101 to get 5% off your Media Composer license purchase. And if you found this tutorial useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media. And if you have any questions, comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching.